So as a kid, I really enjoyed learning about poetry. I found a sense of peace in placing words together that created a melodic rhythm. In the third grade, I was in an oratory contest, clearly preparing for moments like this. I recited the poem Mother to Son by Langston Hughes. I've never forgotten that first part. Well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. I had no idea those words would be the metaphor for the many trials I would face from childhood to adulthood. Those tax splinters and torn boards are similar to the obstacles that we have to overcome in life. Tax, they stick us, causing pain and blood, sometimes bringing tears to the surface. And splinters? I like annoying occurrences and challenges that prevent us from being fully engaged in the present. And boards torn up are like the missing pieces that we need to feel stable and secure. So life for me ain't been no crystal stair. But here's the thing. I found my very own Wakanda forever vibranium that I call my superpower. And so for the sake of this talk, a superpower is your will and determination to navigate the paths of obstacles that life will definitely present to you. Because it comes. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter what that obstacle is, because you, I, we all have the superpower to get through it. Now I know you're sitting on the edge of your seat trying to really understand this idea of a superpower and how you might have it for the good of the world or maybe simply it is just for the good of yourself. Because after all, flight attendants consistently tell us, put your oxygen mask on first before helping anyone else. So let's journey. Let's talk a little bit more about those situations in which you need a superpower. So whether you're 11, like my daughter, who I thought might be the youngest person in the audience today, but I actually heard a other little voice, or whether you're 111, having navigated decades of change throughout your life, there are situations that arose. Maybe you failed a test or failed a class. Maybe you've been homeless and had to live in your car. Maybe you've had to close a business or survived a fire or a flood, or maybe your best friend simply stopped talking to you and you have no idea why. All of those situations will be challenging for any, any, even the strongest person, no matter who it is. As human beings, we thrive on the successes of our lives, not the disappointments. We take pictures of our food, our clothes, everything that we do for the gram. Right? And we say, hey, look, look at me. Look at my overly curated life. Because when life knocks you down, your first instinct is not to share it with the world. It's more like close the curtain, climb in bed in a fetal position, blocking out the light and the sun because you don't want to face your hurt or your pain. And then you realize you can't stay there. Eventually, you have to get up and you have to face it. You have to embrace all of the emotions that come your way. Yes, you all, I mean all of them. And that is when you are able to employ your superpower. What is your superpower? It is resilience, your ability to bounce back when life punches you in the gut and kicks you in the shin because you know that hurts. Now, you may be saying, oh, I, I'm just, I'm not convinced that resilience is a superpower. So, I want you to hold that thought. 
Let me tell you about a pivotal moment in my life when my resilience was most tested. In 2007, I went to a sports bar with a couple of friends, one of them is in the audience today, to watch Sunday night football. And I met the man that would become my husband. He was the obnoxious guy in the bar messing with everyone, and I do mean everyone. <laughs> so since I told you he became my husband, clearly either he became less obnoxious or I was just able to accept his personality. It was a little bit of both. <laughs> We were married in 2011, we had our daughter in 2012, and in 2013, we were both jobless. I was laid off, and he quit his job while I was in Greece. Another talk for another day. <laughs> while we mostly were happy, you did just hear me say he quit his job while I was away. Aside from that, we had a peaceful home environment we genuinely liked each other, and we were rock star co-parents. And that all changed. On April 16th, 2014, Paul came home from playing tennis, complaining of a leg cramp, and I did, as so many of us do, with our WebMD doctorate, I asked him if he wanted bananas and Gatorade, because after all, he needed more potassium and to improve his electrolytes. And so, shortly after a good night kiss and uh, I love you, I climbed into bed. About an hour later, I woke to the pitter-patter of little feet, my daughter Simone, who was coming down the hallway. If she woke up in the middle of the night, usually Paul would wake her up, would go back in her room and help her get settled to get back to bed. This night, he was still asleep. And so, Simone climbed in the bed and was restless and couldn't find her space. And so I nudged Paul. I was not prepared for what would happen next. When I touched him, he was stiff. My heart began racing so fast. I jumped out of bed, phone in hand, flashlight feature on, and I shined my phone in his face. And his eyes confirmed my worst nightmare. He had died in his sleep. I was 36 years old, my husband of just under three years, the father of two girls, had taken his last breath, sleeping right next to me. This was tax splinters, torn boards, and a bare floor all in one package that I wanted to throw away. But in it all, resilience came up without my knowledge, without my permission. In the weeks ahead, I was able to speak at his funeral service. I'm still unsure of how I was able to do that. I talked about the pain, this new notion of becoming a widow at just 36 years old with a two-year-old child. I talked about how angry I was at Paul for leaving me. As a spiritual post person, I talked about how angry I was with God for allowing this to happen. But even in the midst of all of that, people saw resilience. They saw me rise, they saw me keep moving, they saw me continue. And I'm not sure if resilience is innate, if it's something that we are born with. But what I do know, it is a muscle that we can continue to build if we are intentional. We have to be intentional with everything we do. That means surrounding yourself with community. That means being vulnerable in therapy. That means being showing up for yourself and allowing every single emotion to rise and for you to face it and look it in the face and say, I got you. I can take it, I can do it, whatever it is that I need to do. That is the resilience, that is the superpower that each of you carries, that each of you possesses. Here I am nine years later and I am still exercising my resilience. One, as a solo parent, 
which I am single and mingling, just in case anyone has anybody. <laughs> after several layoffs, after tearing an ACL, after this and that happening in my life, I am still here. I am standing. <laughs> and so I want to challenge you. It's like this piece of pottery behind me from a Japanese philosophy called Kintsugi. And what it is, is instead of us being broken and trying to hide the scars as if they don't exist, we repair with lacquer, with gold, so that we see the scars. We all have scars, and we need to make sure that those scars shine through so that we can tell our stories, not hide them. And in true Paul Davis fashion, Paul Davis, that is my husband's name, he has been showing up across the country over the last three weeks. Not actually as himself, obviously, but in this version of a truck, which is a restoration company that bears his name. And I have gotten text messages from people in Utah, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Florida, because they have seen Paul Davis trucks. And I am convinced that he wanted to be here today to remind us all, this restoration company has a tagline that talks about making sure that you recover, reconstruct, and restore your balance after life has knocked you down. You are all resilient. Thank you.